Well, I guess I can cross off the 1950s on the list of places I wish I could have grown up in. Hello once again watchers of good movies. My name is Nick Pell and this is once again coming from my apartment. Now today we are going to be talking about the film Indignation. Now this is a film which I don't really know a lot about going into it at least. It's based on a novel by Philip Roth. Never read any of his works to my knowledge at least. So I did not know what to expect going into this movie and so let's talk about it. The general idea is that this takes place in the midst of the Korean War in the 1950s and uh, you have this American Jewish child who is going to be going off to college and he has very worried parents, which, fine. Once he gets to college, he meets this girl named Olivia, and they begin to form a relationship, and he starts to experience things which he hasn't really experienced before. And we have our movie from there. Logan Lerman plays the main character, Marcus. I thought he did a very good job in his portrayal of the character. I haven't seen a lot of the movies that he's been in, but I am curious to see what else he ends up doing after this film, because it shows he does dramatic work very, very well, and I really enjoyed his performance throughout this movie. Sarah Gaddon, she plays Olivia, and um, she does a good job of kind of having this dual personality, per se, and one of the things which I noticed a lot with her, her portrayal is that there will be times where she's like very sympathetic and kind of flirty with Marcus, and there's other times where he'll say just something which shouldn't be taken very seriously, and she'll just go very, very serious and very intense, and it, it's just an interesting way to do the character, I thought. And then Tracy Letts is the dean of the college. He is someone who interacts with Marcus more than a couple other characters, and I thought that there's an interaction, which I'll get to later, that him and Marcus have, which I thought was very interesting. I'll just cover this right now. The only real issue that I have with this film is that the second half is kind of slow. It's broken up into basically two hours, and it, the second half, I felt, was kind of slow for me. It was tougher for me to get engaged in it, it was tougher for me, for me to follow what was going on with the plot, and I just didn't enjoy it as much. The ending, about the last 20 minutes, is pretty good and pretty interesting because it kind of draws back to what made the first half really, really neat, but I thought just most of the second half didn't really work that well for me. As I've said, performances all around, very, very good, very, very true to the time period and true to a dramatic performance. I really enjoyed it. There are times where some of Marcus's roommates are reciting Shakespeare or just improvising Shakespeare and it's just a really cool thing to see uh, and I just really appreciate that. That his roommates were, at least one of them, was a very interesting character. I wish we would have seen a lot more of him. It's also a very interesting look at the 1950s. This was a time period where things were very, very repressed. This was coming off of World War II into the Korean War, and it wasn't the best time to be youthful, at least compared to today, where things are were a lot more uh, free. <laughs> There's a lot of sexual repression um, in regards to if uh, you found out that a girl gave more than one guy a blowjob or something, then she's automatically a slut. Right. There's a lot of religious oppression as well. There's there's the idea that, oh hey, you can all practice whatever religion you want, but if you don't go to chapel 40 times throughout the before you graduate, you don't get to graduate, because that's just, that makes sense if you're like a chemistry major or something. Don't, yeah, no, that, that kind of shit would have bugged the hell out of me if I had to deal with that now. And there's also a stigma against mental health. The main female actor, um, Olivia in this film, she has mental health issues. There are things which she is dealing with in regards to anxiety and um, some depression and suicidal things, um, which are dealt with and brought up throughout the course of the movie. And just looking at how the culture deals with those things at that time um, and sees just the, even the smallest thing as this huge issue uh, compared to now where it's like, oh hey, take this medication, you're fine. And, well not fine, but you know. It's just an interesting comparison between 2016 and the 1950s and just the way that our cultures kind of deal with mental illness. It's not perfect in either way, but um, just seeing the changes that has gone through over the, the last 50 years or so, very interesting to look at. Then some more about the midway through the movie. There is a point where the Dean and Marcus sit down to have a discussion. He just basically wants to uh, find out why he wants to switch rooms, because that's something which eventually happens in the movie. And they end up going to this big discussion about uh, things re regarding religion, regarding kind of how uh, Marcus wants to be perceived and how um, people misperceive things that he has written or things that he has said and presume things about him. I just found it to be a very, very interesting 
conversation, and I kind of wish that there was a lot, a lot more in regards to that, because you have this this dean who's just being very, very rude, honestly. He's just asking for information, private information, about Marcus's life, which he is generally giving him, but then starts to get really frustrated by the end. It's just an interesting discussion, I thought. I, I really liked it. I thought that the examples that Marcus brought up in regards to like, people that he was referencing and uh, just the, the argument that he had, very, very cool, very interesting, and um, just the reasons that he has his religious views and everything. I really like that. So uh, that was just one of the high points of the movie for me, which I wanted to bring up. So guys, Indignation, not in very many theaters right now. I had to drive about half an hour to find a theater that actually had it. Nowhere else near me has it, and I don't know how many theaters it's actually out in right now. But if you do have a chance to see it in this weekend or the next couple weekends, definitely check it out. I think it's, it is well worth your time if it sounds like something you would be interested in. If you've ever seen a Philip Roth novel adaptation or have read any of his novels and you have enjoyed them, this might be something that you would also enjoy. Uh, I think it's not a film for everybody because it does have like I said, a really slow second half, um, for this I thought so, um, and it deals with issues which aren't necessarily the most stimulating for at least a younger audience. So, uh, take that as you will, but I really ended up enjoying this film for the most part. Definitely check it out if you're interested, but guys, those are just my thoughts on the movie. Let me know yours in the comments down below. Did you like it as much as I did? Did you hate it more than I did? Let me know. Like, favorite, comment, and subscribe once again if you so choose. I appreciate it immensely. And as always, my people, my name is Nick Paul, and once again, keep on watching.